Mr. Justin Michael Williams is in the building. What's up? What's going on, Justin? What's going on? <laughs> oh, my light is like shit right here. Hold on. I got to move somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have bad light. <laughs> well, now you, you're used to this. This is your thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. What's going on? Ah, everything is well. Everything is well. In Atlanta, where are you located? It's beautiful there. I'm in Los Angeles. Ah, yeah, very nice. It's like so sunny out. So Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I have a friend of mine. She, she, uh, she's there uh, visiting a friend. She said it was like 70 degrees the other day. It's, it's 73 today. Wow. <laughs> so we're pretty lucky. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you again for taking time out to meet with me. This is Dinner and Dialogue. I don't know if you've got the message. I did. I got have my food okay. right here. I ordered, All right. Yeah, I actually ordered something from Postmates. I got a breakfast for dinner. It's like a breakfast burrito. <laughs> okay. Right All right. That's cool. So been, that's I'm cool. actually that's starving, so I've been waiting for you. Okay, by all means. Dig right in. <laughs> this is very interactive. We want what to make sure you eat? I have... Um, like baked chicken, some plantains, yep. and a little bit of collards. So. Yeah. Is my audio okay or should I put my earbuds in? No, you're good. I'm good? Okay, cool. You are good, good, good. Well, again, thank you. A lot of people may think, Justin, wait a minute. Didn't you just have a Justin on last? You did. I saw last, I saw that your last speaker was named Justin too. So. Yeah, Justin Marcel um, McManus, who plays on Power, uh, yeah. who played Power Book too. Not anymore. Uh, this is this is another yet another Justin, uh, Justin Michael Williams. A lot of people are like, well, who is this guy? You know, they had to kind of Google and try to find out who you were. You know, he's a top twenty uh, recording artist, uh, an author, uh, dare I say, a keynote speaker, uh, and all around leader, spiritual leader, advisor, visionary. Um, what else? Well, am I missing anything? I'm here. I'm here. I'm a. I'm a brother. I'm a son. I'm an uncle. <laughs> I'm all kinds of things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So, so how things been going with you since this whole pandemic and COVID? How are you with COVID? You know, it's been a really interesting time. But you know what? I'll say something really, really. That's something that came up in a um, podcast for me the other day. Hey, Fabian. I see. I'm seeing people that I know here. What's up, y'all? So okay. the um, something that came up the other day that was interesting around like, you know, so many of us have all these different things that we do. Yeah. And um, I always think that one of the hardest things right now is like everybody like trying to say, are, what are you like an all people said, are you an author? Are you a speaker? Are you a teacher? Are you a musician? Are you yeah. this? Are you that? And one of the yeah. things that's really interesting about like, as we are, I feel like honestly, like decolonizing what we do in the world, like colonization, like really wants to like put us in a box and say like, here's what it yeah. is that you do. But like, you know, indigenous and like every culture from beyond is like never really looked at it like that. And I think one of the things that's kind of sad is everybody's so focused on trying to figure out like what to call themselves that they're not actually yeah. focused on what they do. <laughs> Which yeah. is like, is what you're doing actually working? Like, is what you're doing actually helping people? Are you just focusing on like what your brand is gonna be? So I always right. say, y'all can call me whatever the fuck you wanna call me. Okay. <laughs> you can call right. me whatever you want. You call me whatever you want. You know, tree spirit. I don't, I don't care what you call me. As long as it's helping you, then I'm good. You That's know right. what I mean? That's right. That's right. What, what, what would you say of all the things that you are, right? Yeah. You're so many things, right? Which one would you say that you lean into the most? and get most the most feedback from uh, from your followers? I think the thing that I probably do the, well, I'll say it this way, like I, I use my voice for a living. Like that's what I do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So sometimes it's singing, sometimes it's writing, sometimes it's speaking. And some people only see me in those contexts. Like some people have only read my books. Some people have only seen me speak. And, so, you know, yes. so it's, it's any way that I get to use my voice in a way that is kind of making a difference, you know, like now. Mm -hmm. So there we are. One of my friends right. was laughing. He was like, bruh, he was like, you just talk for a living. I was like, I know. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, but it's, it's cool. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no, nothing wrong. It's great. It's wonderful. You yeah. yeah, you also have a a following uh, from an organization that you started it's called The Kingdom. I don't know if I should call it an organization or, or whatever. It's uh, and, and it's it really inspiring. Uh, I, I just got hip to it uh, by actually Fabian that you mentioned, you mentioned it to me, um, that it's, it's church, it's, 
it's uh, TED Talks, it's, it's music, it's all of those things. You know, how did, how did that get started for you, for those who may not know? Yeah, so, gosh, a little while ago, when was it? We're on our 30th week this week. Tomorrow's gonna be our 30th wow. session. And um, in August, I just had this feeling of like, you know, with everything that was going on in the world, how, like we needed a space to be able to come together, to like really come together across what are perceived as divides. And there's so many divides that are yeah. grown at us, you know, that look like divides, but most people really are good. And most people want to do better. And most people want to learn. Like, that's really what I feel. And so I said, okay, let me see if I created this space that was like, if church, Super Soul Sunday and a TED Talk had a baby, you know, like yeah. live music, it does, you don't have to be religious, but if you are religious, it doesn't matter what it is, you can come. Like we're gonna praise, we're gonna worship, we're gonna pray, we're gonna celebrate. You can pray to whoever it is you wanna pray to, you know, but like we're just coming in this space to, to be in hope and positivity. And so we um, started uh, in August and now we're in our 30th week and it's really fun. Like sometimes I have special guests yeah. Sometimes it's just me teaching. Some there's always like action steps, you know. Um, my kind of my main intention was, you know, I grew up in church, and I yeah. always felt like I like church, but you know, you leave church and then your parents are like cussing you out of the car. It's like you know, and so yeah. it's like, how do you take mm -hmm. all the stuff that you learn in those moments and actually put them in action steps in your life? And that's kind of the TED right. Talk Super Soul Sunday aspect of it is to really take it to the next level. So, yeah. 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 But what has been the most challenging about that? You know, when you say you're 30, 30 weeks in, you know, it's something new, right? Some people may not be aware of what, you know, what this thing is, they're not really sure, they don't know how to engage. You know, what has been the most challenging for you as far as getting your message across and it has resonated with folks? Hmm. I'll be so honest with you. It, there hasn't been anything challenging with this. Okay. It's been Good. just wonderful. We're growing like, we have 1,200 people from 36 different countries that are coming live every Sunday. It's uh, wow. it's like, and it's growing by about 100 or so people every single week. And the community is like really loves each other. And they're really, the people who come every week are starting to get to know each other in the chat box. And like, it's, um. It's just so beautiful. It's a big gift. And now for people who can't come on Sundays, um, we also put it on our po on a podcast every week too for people if they need to listen to it later. Oh my okay. God, I see Vinay. Vinny is here. Dude, this dude right here who just joined the live session. Okay. He has the best, literally the funniest thing and the best thing I saw on Instagram all of last year. I hope he's still okay. here listening right now because it's so dope it's like he does this this skit kind of thing this monologue where he's like pretending that uh like a space an outer space like intergalactic thing is interviewing earth and it's everybody needs to go look this up on his page it's my best okay. thing that i've seen on the internet all last year so Vinny, okay. i don't know if i'm saying your name right Vinny, Vinay. just what's up man all right Vinny. well we're going to definitely check it out i want to uh, see what that's all about yeah that's awesome that's awesome so what are you up to now? What, what are you working on now? I know that you, you know, you do music. Um, I know that you an author, Stay Woke is one of your most recent books. So what, what's, what's, what's the plan for 2021 as you've manifested this year? Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that's been really interesting for me, you asked in the beginning, and then I totally didn't answer you, like what's, what this quarantine has been like <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is, um, <laughs> Hi, hi, Melanie. I'm just saying hi to all the people I'm seeing coming in. So I, um, <laughs> I, so when my book came out in February, just before my book came out, we had planned for me to go on a 27 city book tour that was then going to go to Europe. And so I was going to be away from home for about seven months. And okay. so in January, I, I was like, well, I'm not paying rent in LA for seven months and not be home. So I moved right. all my shit into storage and uh, went on the road. And we were three stops into my tour and COVID. And so mm. everything got canceled, everything got completely postponed. And it was like, I think for a lot of us, like this year has shaken a lot of us and turned our worlds upside down. And I'm definitely not excluded from that, you know? Sure. And so yeah. it's been a really interesting year because um, my tour got canceled and then pivoted virtual. 
And mm -hmm. what's dope is virtually we've actually reached way more people than we ever would have reached in person, which is amazing. Yes. Um, but it's also been interesting because I've now officially for one year been nomadic, like I haven't had a home. Um, okay. So right now I'm staying in this beautiful place, you can probably see behind me in, yeah. in the Hollywood Hills, which is a gift. And I've, I've just, since everything's been virtual for me, you know, right now I'm really looking at like, where is it, where is it that I want to land next? Mm -hmm. Because I've been mm -hmm. in LA for 16 years. And, okay. you know, I'm just wanting like trees and nature. And if shit's just going to stay virtual, like I don't need to be in the middle of the city anymore, you know? Right, right. So, well, yeah. But, what, what, what is your energy saying? What is your energy saying as far as where you might want to uh, manifest? Into. Somewhere with big trees and a big lot of trees. silence and a lot of oh. silence. Yeah. And not like hella remote to where it's like off you can't, you can't you know, get to in stuff. the middle of nowhere, but like far enough out where you can like within 15, 20 minutes, like drive to something with good food and some music and stuff. But um, I don't know where that is yet, you know, but I think I, the reason I brought that up is because you asked what I'm working on next and I'm working on my next book right now. And um, working on new music and in order for me to like write and create i um mm -hmm. i just need that like kind of quiet chill space you know to be able to be in so okay and, yeah. and you find yourself when you're in the quiet space is that when you're the you're most creative yeah. um yeah. i'm you would never guess i'm totally an introvert like i'm i'm totally not an extrovert at all i i can go out there and do it but i i like need my like like my little cave time so yeah no no i get it i get it because i'm i'm kind of the same way when it comes to creativity i uh my, my creativity really comes like in the morning like first thing uh it's fresh it's new it's it's it's, it's the beginning of a new day so yeah uh, that, that's something that i can also also kind of get with from a creativity perspective yeah uh i, I see you seeing looking at all your your folks and, and they're, they're coming in and waving. You guys, Hi, everybody. I know, just know that I see all of you. Is Alonzo still in here? Alonzo is in here. Story of Alonzo. He is, he hasn't, he just had a single come out. Amazing queer black artist that like, it has the voice that you would freaking die for. And he has an album coming out in March and he's just dope. So I'm just like, I'm shouting out all of you who are in here. All of y'all could be on here talking to him right now because you all have so many amazing things happening. And we, and we welcomed the, the conversation by, by yeah. all means. Uh, yeah. You did a you did a, a awesome concert four years ago on the NPR Tiny Desk, and that song uh, "Here with Me" was was pretty moving. Uh, what what was the inspiration about that? I know that you were really really close to your grandmother. Was that yeah. was that the inspiration for for that particular song? Yeah. So um, "Here with Me" is a song that I wrote about my grandmother. So. Um, several years ago, you know, my grandmother, who I was super, super close to, got diagnosed with stage four cancer. The doctors told her she had a couple months to live. And it was a huge shock to our family. And when she was passing, she actually just asked me a question that totally changed my life. Like I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing music at all. I was just speaking, I was teaching, I was trying to like keep my life really like doing what I thought was like practical and realistic, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I got to her house after we got her diagnosis and she basically looked at me and was like, if you were in my shoes and you knew you were gonna die in two months, what would you do? Yeah, and it was like the craziest moment. And you know what she really said, you know, I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? And what she really said in that moment, she was like, and don't you open your lips until you're ready to tell me the truth. You know, because she was like, wanting to talk to me about this for a long time. And uh, so I closed my eyes and I just said to her, I would quit every single thing that I'm doing and I would do music, I would record an album. Mm -hmm. And I had never been in a recording studio. I had never written a song. I had never, I'd never done any of that. And wow. um, I had been singing like when I was a kid, but I mean, I had never actually pursued it in any meaningful way. And yeah. she just made me look her in the eyes and promise her that I would do it. And mm. so, you know, I promised her and she passed away a, a little bit later. And it was interesting because even though I promised her, I realized that what she had me do in that moment, like, cause I had my eyes closed and I had my hands over my heart and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, crying. and. 
it was really promising myself. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it changed everything for me. And, you know, so my album ended up coming out. My first single was about Here With Me. I wrote about her just yeah. since she was here to see in this realm, at least. I feel like she is here, you know, but yeah. at least in this yeah. realm. And uh, yeah, it, it really like having my album, people see me and they see like, oh, my album charted and I see you messy there. I see all of you writing some of the songs in there, but yeah. you know, my album charted in the top 20 and people hear all this stuff and they think, oh, ta-da, you know, like, bruh. For me, it was like moving through so much fear, so much of that voice in my head that was like, you're not good enough. You haven't done this long enough. Everybody's so much yeah. better than you. You don't sing that good. You should just go back and do something more practical. You're never going to make money at this. Like all those voices in my head. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, because of my meditation practice, I was yeah. always able to come back to my truth, you know, right. like my center and choose mm -hmm. faith and to believe instead of fear. Yeah, yeah, because I look at fear, I mean, you can look at the word fear in, in a way from a uh, acronym perspective, you can say forget everything and run. And yeah. I like to look at forget everything and rise. Yes. Uh, you, could, you could definitely uh, change the narrative of your, of your existence uh, by having no fear. So, uh, and speaking of which, uh, when I started, uh, when I looked I looked you up and I, I was introduced to your program, Manifest 2021. I said, you know what, this, I want to reset. It's, I think it's, it's, this is uh, time for that. And I believe this would be a great uh, opportunity to kind of write some things down, come in tune to uh, some of the things that I was looking to do and been putting off and procrastinating and all kind of stuff. Uh, for those who may not know what you know, Manifest 2021 is, and your four degrees of, of uh, manifesting. Kind of tell us a little bit about that and how people can get involved with what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Manifest, it's a free masterclass that people can get on my website. It's also at the link in my bio. It's called Manifest 2021. And thank you, Fabian. Fabian's a man, man. Just like, just be uplifting everybody. It's amazing. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> you know, it's basically a masterclass. And the thing is, is this word manifesting or like accomplishing your dreams or doing vision boards or writing your thing at the beginning of the year, doing affirmations, it's all a lot of bullshit that people throw around every year that nobody actually really understands how it really works, you know? And so what I do in this masterclass, I've been teaching it for, I think this is our four, fourth year. I do it every New Year's Eve on, you know, on New Year's Eve during the day. And it started out as just a thing for my close friends and family in my house. And okay. it started growing and growing and growing. And now we had, I think, 2,000 something people from 24 countries watching this year. And yeah. you know, the program is still available. People can watch the recording. It comes with a little workbook that helps you reverse engineer the process of manifesting. Mm -hmm. I see you, Sam, you, I see you. Um, so that helps you reverse engineer the process of manifesting so that you can actually start to say, okay, what is it that I really want to accomplish in my life? And how do I realistically go about the process of doing this, even when I hit fear, even when I'm sabotaging myself, even in all these moments, how do we start to unpack this and really take our lives to the next level in a meaningful way? So right. yeah, people can get that on my website. It's just, or in the link in my bio, justinmichaelwilliams.com and they'll find it there. Awesome. Awesome. Now, have you ever taken your own advice and it didn't work out as you had anticipated? <laughs> and it didn't work out? Right. Did not. It doesn't work out all the time. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. that happens. So one of the things that I say in the, in the class is that mm -hmm. your vision isn't about it coming true as you see it in your mind. It's about who yeah. you become. Mm -hmm. who you're becoming in pursuit of your goals. Right. Because I believe that God, spirit, the universe, whatever you want to call it, you know, I love that somebody named Marianne Manifest Dreams just came in the room. That's dope. <laughs> I think we manifested her coming in here because we're talking about wow. manifesting. Um, and so one of the things that I think is important to name that is people get stuck on what they think their vision is supposed to look like. And they mm -hmm. end up missing the blessing that's trying to show up in their life because mm -hmm. they're so fixed on what the thing is supposed to look like instead of what right. it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. 
And so for me, I think God or the universe or spirit or whatever you call it has a bigger plan for us. Oprah says this all the time than we could ever imagine for our own selves. And so we yeah. set our aim and then we have to kind of go with, with life. You know, no plan is exempt from experiencing and interacting with reality. So, right. so yeah, the shit has not worked out for me all the time. Like for example, planning a 27 city tour and it getting canceled because of COVID. Like it's just like, this is- Right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think we all sometimes get caught up on the destination and not the journey and just yeah. really enjoying and taking in the, the, uh, the steps and the progress and the, the setbacks that we have and the, the lessons learned from those. So absolutely. Uh, uh, fall fall in line with what you're, what you're saying there. Now, is there someone that you, because I know you do these things too, you interview folks and they come on your, your YouTube channel and uh, you go go in on some of, the, some of the topics there. Is there someone that you've interviewed uh, that has really kind of gave you a aha moment and just kind of blew your mind? Oh my God so many people but i'll tell you two that are coming to mind right now so vanessa in was an incredible incredible guide and teacher and leader who's become a, a, a good friend of mine actually i interviewed her and she has recently been kind of outed as pink the the singer pink's uh like main coach and therapist in person that she works with as her guide and she works with okay. a lot of kind of a-list people and we became friends a few years ago and I finally got to interview her uh, twice, actually, for the Kingdom and for the Manifest event. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom that she shares is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yes. And people can check out the interview that I have with her. It's, it's called uh, The Power of Wisdom on my okay. podcast. And um, I also have her in the Voices of Hope um, for Manifest that's on my blog. And then the second person, is somebody who everybody should go give a shout out to on Instagram right now. Her name is Sheila Marie. Her Instagram yeah. is the Sheila Marie, S-H-E-L-A-H, -H, Marie. Yeah. And she is just the truth. Like, she's the truth. She is a dope ass black woman who is like the perfect mix of like namaste meets Hennessy, <laughs> you know? And like, just it like, is the best and she really gives like crazy crazy practical wisdom that makes you think about things even makes me think about things differently mm -hmm. so yeah those are the two people that are coming to mind right now but i love all my guests yeah yeah anybody that you would love to it's kind of like will be nirvana to you from a guest perspective someone you would want to to interview oprah i gotta interview oh. oprah I Come on, everybody like, it. It. <laughs> it's like that's it you know what i mean like she's number one um, <laughs> i would love just i mean even if it wasn't on tv just to like talk to her you know yeah. just talk yeah. to her. like what yeah. i really want to talk to her about um that i think would be a different conversation with people it, it, and without necessarily needing to get into her like personal business you know yeah. i mean yeah. without needing to expose all of her personal business sure. Um, sure. i would want to get into how it is like what does it really look like to build a thriving full life of passionate career and also have a long-term committed relationship in the way that she does mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what does that really look like because i think a lot of people struggle with knowing how to create those things together mm -hmm. and what are the things to look out for what are the things that you have to sacrifice what are the things that are really realistic you know based on her experience because i feel like that's one of the things that i've never heard her talk about from her own experience she talks about stedman all the time now but never like what does that mean to be a world leader and be making a big impact in the world and be committed to your career and be committed to your relationship so yeah that's what i want to know yeah. that's a, i'm sure it's a, an enormous amount of uh privacy that that yeah. goes on and i can only imagine the, the number of NDAs that she has to ask. <laughs> yeah, and I see you, Katie. Katie said, I did. Katie, Katie's on here, and she was like, you interviewed Christina, Christina Aguilera before, which was cool. Um, but Oprah. Oh, Lee, you did? Next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I did. All right. I, I think I missed that one uh, with you and Christina. 
dude, it's not, it's, it's, it's like old school. So this is the most okay. ridiculous story. So when I was, <laughs> so I used to be like a crazy, crazy, crazy Christina Aguilera fan when I was a kid, like just okay. like pictures of her all over my wall, like every magazine, every concert when I was younger. And okay. um, when I moved to LA, when I was 18, I, <laughs> When I was 18, I'm just looking at these people's comments. <laughs> anyway, when I was, when I was, I don't know what that is. But anyway, yeah. when I was 18, I moved to LA to go to college. And I mm -hmm. got this notice from, because I was a part of her fan clubs, asking me if I wanted to come to this, like, you know when they used to do, like, on MTV, the album release special, where they would, like, yeah. do a live yeah. show. So I was going to the taping of that for this Yahoo Nissan live set thing that she did. And there were literally a hundred people in the room, which is small, you know, that is small. For, for something like this. And it was a, a beautiful stage and lights. And I'm sitting there and the producer just walks up to me and says, hey, young man, we're looking for people to interview Christina for the show. Do you want to interview her for the show? And I wow. like lost my mind. I was 18. And so I interviewed her on that actual live TV show. And I'm uh -huh. like shaking and like crying and like really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so are you and Christina kind of still in touch? Does she know who you are when you? I don't know. Reach out to I'm probably no. not. No, no. We had a moment. We did have a moment on the stage, but I don't. I mean, I'm sure she's had many moments in her lives, and she may. She maybe she knows who I am. Maybe not. I would maybe love not. to get teach her a deeper meditation practice, though. I would love to really get her. I know she meditates already, but I would mm -hmm. love to get her like really, really super dialed in. You know, okay. on that. So awesome, awesome. Speaking of which. What, what would you say is the top three things that we could take away from this dinner and dialogue as viewers uh, to really center ourselves and kind of change our way of, you know, being? You're, you're really good. You ask really good questions. Just oh, well, thank you. Thank you. So, um, number one, I think the number one thing, if I gave people three top takeaways right now, number one is that there's a difference between change and transformation. Mm. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Things change all the time. You change your hair, you change where you live, you change relationships. And even if we go into the social political, we change leaders, we just change presidents, we change laws, we change Senate, we change everything. Mm. None of those changes ever last if we haven't transformed. Yeah. We have not actually done the work that it takes to transform within. You know, mm -hmm. that is the real work. And when people hear transform within, it sounds like, woo woo, okay, sure, yeah. what are you talking about? Right. But, but it's really practical. Like if I just break it down on, on this level, okay? Mm -hmm. How many of us have been in a relationship with someone, whether it's romantic or not, got yeah. out of that relationship because we realized it wasn't right for us, mm -hmm. got in a new relationship with a different person, and then soon realize you in the same relationship, same conversations, same shit, same, same cycles, shit, yeah. same issues over and over and over. And, mm -hmm. and that's because if we haven't transformed within, we can't yes. show up for any relationship differently. Even if the whole person changes, even if you move to mm -hmm. a whole new country, same yeah. stuff. And so this is what it means to do the inner work that it takes to change. And I think that leads me to my second point, which yeah. is deeply about what it means to do inner work. So inner work a lot of people just look at it as thinking positive and staying motivated right listening to podcasts meditating you know doing reading whatever it is that you're doing trying to manifest affirmations and all that stuff is great you absolutely should do that but mm -hmm. that's only half the equation is literally right. only one half of the equation that's right the other half of the equation is digging into what is called your shadow and mm -hmm. your shadow is any place in your life in which you have not shined your light of awareness to on mm -hmm. and so it's your trauma and the things in your past that are controlling you because some of us think we're free but really we're like little marionette you know the puppets with the little strings and we yeah. think we're free yeah. but we got all these strings and attachments to old things that are actually making our choices for us and we don't realize it and yeah. so when you look in your shadow and you shine your light of awareness onto it you can cut those strings and really become free, you know, and, and step right. forward. Yeah, I mean, from, a, from a casting of shadows, 
uh, does it matter on which direction the, the shadow is cast? Is it cast behind you? That's in interesting. Front? That's in I think both. Yeah. Yeah, I which light so. which way the which way the light is is coming from? Is it one that's behind you and it's kind of pushing you forward or is it you're meeting it halfway? What and, do you think? Front? I think I think it could be uh a little bit of both. Uh yeah. but I tend to I tend to be more um energetic and, and enthusiastic when I am facing the sun because you know although it's bright it's it's kind of a beacon of optimism and and, and hope so that's kind of my my take on the casting of shadows yeah yeah are you are you still yeah. with us that, I know you kind of I'm it's kind of I'm still here can you still hear me am I good sure. okay <laughs> okay I just saw the little circle going this <laughs> I saw that too and I got nervous. Yeah, I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, I saw that and I got nervous too. Yeah, I agree with you. I think, you know, this is the thing. We all have things that have happened in our pasts. And so many people don't like to look at the past because they feel like they're, they're over it or they've moved past it or whatever. But one of the things that is true beyond true from science to spirituality and beyond is, and this is a quote from Sheila Marie, what doesn't heal repeats. Mm -hmm. That's it. What doesn't heal repeats. Absolutely. So you could pretend like you got over it or you may have gotten over it, but if you haven't healed it, it's going to show up again yeah. in your life or it's going to show up in your kids' lives or it's going to show up in your family's lives. And this, this goes as big as like a country, right? As we're mm -hmm. seeing in America, why are we repeating this shit again? Because it hasn't yeah. helped. And so it's individual and collectively, and that's why this work matters so much, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If if you were president, what would be your uh oh, what would be your first uh executive order uh for for us? My first executive order. Yeah. That is a good ass question. I've never even <laughs> thought about this question. And hi, Jen. Um, let me feel what feels right. Mm -hmm. My first executive order would be to immediately, um, like literally immediately, place required real factual historical education of the history of the United States the real history of the United States mm -hmm. in every mm -hmm. single school, every single high school, every elementary school, every college required for everyone. Um, that has yeah. a, because I think this is what I know is to be true is that if people really knew, because I, I do a lot of speaking in companies and organizations yeah. and universities that sometimes are primarily mm -hmm. white, right? Like almost all white, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. people don't know. We don't know. We don't even yep. know. People think yep. that we're supposed to know just because we're black. We don't know half the time. And so, mm -hmm. like, if when people really feel it and know what the true history is, you can't help but have empathy and to change what's coming in the future. And I think that's why America is in the position that it's in. This is why, you know, Germany, you know, you can, everybody in Germany knows what happened in the Holocaust. There's no secret. It's everywhere. Right. In right. the United, and that's not going to happen again there. In the United States, we don't even know the truth. They're still talking about pilgrims and Indians coming together on Thanksgiving. The shit is not true, mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah. and, and so we're in this whole facade, and so we can't actually make any meaningful change. So that would be my first yeah. executive order. That's true. Okay, that's good. That's good, because I think there's a lot to learn from the actual real truths of, of history. Yeah. Uh, and it could be uh, the lack of teaching the truth uh, would be stemmed from, I think, fear. Uh, I think fear is a, a big part of why truth is not really being taught. So yeah. that can be a whole nother, that can be a whole nother podcast. And dinner. <laughs> totally. Well, you know what? Like one of the things you might've heard me say before that I, I like to say everywhere that I can is fear and faith are literally the same thing. Mm -hmm. And people are like, usually say, how could those be the same thing? Like they feel so different. Fear and faith are literally the same thing. And that's because 
bold this is like my bar this is like my the justin bar it's like bold fear and faith require you to believe in something that you can't see and that hasn't happened yet yeah that's right i love that when you say that in the manifest 21 yeah Yeah, you heard it and it's it's the truth it's like you're gonna believe in something either way and you're either choosing to believe in fear or you're choosing Mm -hmm. to believe in faith you're choosing to believe in worry and doubt or you're choosing to believe in positivity and hope and Mm -hmm. i i don't think choosing to believe in faith means ignoring reality but choosing to see reality and know that we can move through it and past it and beyond it and so that is Mm -hmm. you know a big part of kind of the work that i try to get people to do with meditation and stuff like that yeah yeah what would you say has been your most rewarding uh engagement that you've you've had so far whether it be through your music through manifest 2021 yeah uh through talks and all that kind of stuff what have you you have kind of sat back and said wow that's that's awesome like i really feel the impact that i've made in this 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 was yeah and i see some of them are here right now hi eli i just see some of them here from this my the number one thing that i do that makes me feel like i'm making the biggest contribution and and impact in the world is um speaking the speaking and teaching and singing that i do for students um for high school and college students i you know when we when we put out my book one of the things that we decided to do was not to just go to like bookstores in these privileged neighborhoods which is what people normally do when they have a book you know you go to all these bookstores and um what i said was no let's not do that let's instead go to high schools and colleges in some of the most impacted cities in the united states so we like Flint, Michigan, Atlanta, you know, Oakland, you know, Houston, just all over Chicago. And so we've been doing it virtually now, but we started in person and we've reached, you know, 45,000 kids this year. Wow. Giving them all free books, done this big event that's kind of like the TED Talk music concert style thing. And yeah. um and that feels like it's making the biggest impact to me cuz it's it's giving the kids something that imagine if we had any of this shit when we were like 16 like game changer you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, i'll ask you this one question if you could change the past or predict the future which one would you prefer these questions okay this is dinner dialogue. Justin. I love dinner dialogue. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stall and take a bite of my burrito while I. By all means, that. think about that. Let That's it marinate. Right. I'm gonna take a sip of my kombucha. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I see all my Houston people in here. Um, if I could change the past or predict the future. Yeah. I think I would change the past. Mm, mhm. So okay. because the past what happens in the past is sometimes the biggest predictor of the future. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so if you change your past then your present changes but then it's kind of scary cuz it's like that butterfly effect thing, you know what I mean? And so <laughs> um yeah, so I think change the past and not because I have I have some regrets in my life, you know, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. mostly because once you have the perspective damn this is hard bro because it's like now i'm thinking through it cuz i'm like once you have yeah. the perspective then you could go back right. and like fix some things but you wouldn't be able to fix it if you didn't have the situation to have the perspective in the first place you know what i mean that's right that's true so i don't know so maybe i would want the future cuz if you get the future <laughs> cuz if you could predict the future then you're like oh well I know this is going to be successful and I know this isn't. So let me not do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I I do like what you said where you were going and leaning into the perspective of the past. Yeah. If you learn from what that is, that kind of helps you in the present. It kind of help you kind of receive the future a bit better, right? Mm-hmm. You want to go into whatever the future is with the same perspective that you would have based on the history. Yeah. So, totally. And that's like Katie's yeah. like and hi Layla I see you here Katie's like an elite oh my god everybody Delia it's just so many Mallory Sam What's up Mark, what's up Dale what's, what's up what's now? up everybody Brandon <laughs> Sebastian Someone's... love y'all So Katie Someone said, said their hair hurts What'd you say 
Someone said their head hurts. I get it, because mine too, because maybe neither, maybe neither, but, but if I had to pick one, I think it would be the past. You know, I, I think of one moment in particular. My, uh -huh. my little sister was, my youngest sister, she was like about to give birth. She was like pregnant and she went in and she was giving, like go, gonna go into labor and I was in LA. She's in the Bay Area. And they called me and I knew like the plan was she'd go into labor, I'd come down the next day and see the baby. But they called yeah. me and said, hey, she's going into labor. And then I finished my work day and they were like, she's still not, she still hasn't had it yet. If you want to jump on a flight, you can come and like be in the room when she has a baby. And I had an early morning for work. I was on my book deadline and I was like, no, I'm not going to fly because I could get on the plane and she has a baby and then I missed the whole thing. And now I flew all the way there and whatever. And it mm. ended up, had I got on that flight, I would have made it just right on time. And I really, really regret that I didn't go. Like, it's, it's like uh. one of my biggest life regrets that I did not go that day. Mm. And mm -hmm. if I could go back in time, I would like do that again because I won't be able to experience that again. Like my sister having her first child, you That's know. Right. So That's right. That's true. Very true. Well, this has been awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, what What would be some of your most, your parting words for us this evening? Um, I want to thank you for taking time out to speak with us. You know, it's going into Sunday. Kingdom awaits. Yeah. <laughs> the next day. So what what's some of the parting words that you can leave with us to kind of keep us inspired, keep us going? There's a lot of to your point, a lot of shit going on. Uh to kind of keep us on high and have high levels of vibration intact. I'll leave you with a little song. Come, Come on, song. That's what I was talking about. That's what I like. <laughs> Did you know the words to this, like I think no matter how much you meditate or how much you read or pray or whatever it is that you do, there's like every single time, no matter what, there's always gonna be that little child inside of each of us who just wants to know that they're enough. That's always gonna yeah. show up in our lives. And so there's a song that I've been singing all over the place that people know um, called I Am Enough. They're saying, play the song. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sing a little bit of it a cappella. Um, okay. And I'll do... Yeah, I'll actually sing it like in a, in a little bit of a lower octave so you, you guys can just kind of feel the words with me and also because okay. I'm like not warmed up right now, so. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So the words, if you feel this, I think a lot of people can relate to this. So it says. Mm. Hmm. Little boy, don't cry. You've been in pain enough. Little girl, don't hide. You finally say enough. Uh, I'm trying to go down the go down to a different key, but just one day I'll look into your eyes, show you you don't need to hide behind disguise. Spread your wings, you're terrified. Don't be afraid, you're born to fly. I'm by your side. I am enough. I am golden, baby, yeah. I am enough. I am enough. I see people chiming in. I am yeah. enough. You are enough. I am golden, baby, yeah. I am enough. Ba, 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 ba. I am enough. And the second verse just goes, Little girl, it's all right. You've taken the blame, enough. Little boy, don't hide. You've been ashamed, enough. And I just, I just, you know, I, I just love these words. Like, mm -hmm. we've all mm -hmm. been there. Like, you've been ashamed enough. You know, one day I'll look right. to your eyes, show you you don't need to hide behind disguise. Spread right. your wings, you're terrified. Don't be afraid, you're born to fly. I'm by your side, you know? And right now, like, we get to be by the side of that child inside of ourselves and parent ourselves in the way that we needed to be parented and be kind to ourselves and be compassionate with ourselves and show up for ourselves. And, 
you know, be, be there for ourselves so that we can know that we're enough and we don't let our trauma control us. I think one of the things I'll say is, you know, your past doesn't define you, but what does define you is how you create meaning from your past. Mm -hmm. That's something that this woman, Casey Crown, always says that I love. And, and um, so this is our time to step up and do the work, you know, to do the real work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for taking the time out, Mr. Justin, Michael Williams. Hey, you can I shout this now? out real quick? Can I shout this yes, out? Yes, yes. So Probably. I wanted to say just by chance. So this is No Hugs 2020. And I have the little shirt on too. They just dropped it off to me the other night. Will Lamb is, is a homeboy who created this and it's amazing. They're raising funds actually to support healthcare workers who are still just like really struggling right now. And so everybody who gets like one of these shirts, it goes to actually give mental health care packages to healthcare workers. And so if you look this up, you know, it's funny, the brand name is really good. It's called Lonely Fans. <laughs> oh, <that> great. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, anyway. That's awesome. Well, thank you. And while we're plugging, I'm gonna plug a new card game that I came up with. If you think that I have a lot of great questions, it's gonna be a hundred questions. Some of them kind of on the truth or dare. Uh, it's gonna uh, require you to do something other than just ask the question. But very interesting. It's gonna be coming out really soon. Uh, I just got the product today, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, but stay tuned for that. And uh, again, everyone, you are family uh, friendly, or what is it? Yeah, yeah. You know, you might want to play the latter half of the game when the kids go to sleep. <laughs> but okay. it's PG thirteen. I think. PG thirteen. I think we're. I think you'll be good. I think you'll be good. It should be fun. It should be fun. Uh, but again, thank you again, Michael. Um, Justin, Michael. I call you Michael, like I know you. Um, what's <laughs> what? Uh, how can people follow you? I mean. How can people, you know, stay in touch? I'm so easy to find. So right here on Instagram, I'm we just will. People think my name is Will. My name is not Will. It's for Justin <laughs> Williams, just Will. But it's okay. okay. Um, um, and so I'm here. But if you just search Justin Michael Williams on Spotify, you'll find my music on Google. You'll find a whole bunch of free shit on YouTube. You'll find meditations and videos and uh, my website and just free stuff that I that I like to give as much free guidance to people as possible because I know we're all having a hard time right now. So, yeah, yeah. awesome, awesome. Cool. Well, we'll be tuned in. Thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. We'll Thank be in touch.